Well, hello. My name is Eric, and I work at Parker Dam State Park in Clearfield County, Pennsylvania. Um, this session is about traversing uphills and downhills on cross-country skis, and it is part of our larger Learn to Cross-Country Ski program here that we do at the park. <coughs> that said, hills are the fun part of skiing. Downhill skiing, they have a chairlift that lifts you up. But on cross-country skis, you kind of have to go up the hill by yourself. And uh, there are a couple different ways of doing that. <sighs> Depends on the steepness of the hill. If it's a slight grade, you can just power your way up like normal parallel stride skiing. Uh, you're going to be providing more power here to keep your momentum going, but you can simply ski up a slight slope. If it gets steeper, you might want to just simply walk up on your skis, remembering that that pattern in that middle third of your ski is what gives you the grip. You need to shift all your weight onto one ski, again on the other, again on the other, again on the other. If you get to a point where it's getting too steep and you start sliding backwards, then it's time, time to try a different technique. Um, one of those techniques would be called the herringbone. Uh, shown here. And how the herringbone works <coughs> is you're pointing your skis out, canting them down into the, the slope of the hill so that you have some grip. But the trick is to lean into it, lean into it, lean into it. If you stop the leaning part, you're going to slide back. So the herringbone, you kind of have to commit and go up the hill, and it leaves a nice herringbone pattern in the snow. Another way to get up a steep hill, if it's too steep to even do the herringbone, is to simply do a parallel stride perpendicular to the hill, like this. That can get you up some very steep banks, um, but you kind of have to watch and keep them exactly perpendicular to the hill. Things can get a little interesting. If in doubt, simply take off your skis, pick up your skis, and walk up the hill. It's the safest way to go. If you come to a small hill that you need to get over, you don't want to put the tip of your ski up on that hill with your tail back here because that gets your kick zone completely out of the snow and you have absolutely no traction. You're just gonna slide back. So the idea is to get a little bit of momentum and then step up onto that hump like this. When you come back off the other side, that little bit of a hill might give you a little kick and throw your weight backwards. It's important to remember to lean forward and stay loose and have fun. Downhill is a little different. Um, downhill, it's kind of like you need to, you think like Elvis, I guess. You bend your knees, keep your body loose, and keep your weight centered over your skis. Uh, a slight downhill, nice and fun, it's relaxing to go. You get into too much of a problem, too much of a hill, and you need to slow down. If it's a slight hill, you can drag your poles a little bit. Something you never want to do is put your poles out in front of you, try and push on, because uh, your body momentum is going to get you impaled on your ski pole, or bend them up, break them, that type of thing. Um, another way to slow yourself down is the snow plow, which is kind of done like this. Sometimes snow plowing on traditional skis can be difficult, uh, but if the conditions are good, you simply keep the tips of your skis together and push out with your heels. And that makes a V in the snow or an A in the snow, and it slows you down. 
Um, best thing you can do if you're getting out of control, going too fast down the hill before you eat a tree, is again that simply fall down. You squat down and fall off to one side and that will stop you pretty quickly. So going up hills, it's a good workout if it's a slight grade. Um, going down hills, a whole lot of fun. Sort of like this.